The fact-finding mission on Myanmar recommended in its major report last September that states and private sector corporations and international financial institutions as well, like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, uh, disengage economically from the Myanmar military. We made that recommendation at the time because we saw the military as the basic problem in Myanmar. It, it was at the heart of all of the very serious human rights violations, the very grave crimes under international law. And so the transformation of the military in its current form as a dominant political and economic actor is essential for change to occur in Myanmar and for these human rights violations to end. In this report, we've taken that recommendation further, or rather we've tried to give it substance by highlighting the areas in which the military is most active economically and the steps that need to be taken in economic disengagement. Our purpose is not a sanction. Uh, against Myanmar. Uh, we would be very happy if the rest of the society and economic uh, interests of the rest of the society flourish. Our only interest is that the army be a professional army and be limited to military functions and not get involved in economic life, not avoid civilian oversight, and in that sense not exploit the economic resources of Myanmar uh, for their own interest uh, and not an interest of their uh, people. What drew us into this was a number of factors and it turns out that uh, this is sourced within the Tatmadaw business empire which is based primarily on the extraction of precious gems, primarily jade and rubies and, and therefore in terms of the accountability context there's a urgent need to scrutinize the origins of jade and rubies, which at this stage, at this point, uh, risk becoming known as genocide gems, akin to the blood diamonds, the infamous blood diamonds. Our findings, firstly, uh, indicate that the military is economically active through two major groups of corporations in almost all sectors of the Myanmar economy. Um, it's particularly active in the jade and ruby mining area, but other areas of mining as well, in construction, banking and insurance, tourism, uh, the timber industry, and so on. But the second finding is a very significant one. Its dominance is not as great as it was 20 years ago. Um, it's now possible to be involved financially, economically in Myanmar without having to be involved with the military. And so an important part of what we are doing in this report is identifying those corporations and other businesses active in Myanmar that are military related and so should be avoided and areas where people can invest or do business in confidence that they're not dealing with these human rights violators. So the purpose of this report is to analyze and put forward uh, the economic interests of the Tatmadaw, mainly because one, we want to show their economic independence so there is no civilian oversight. So they're, they're allowed to function freely without ever being uh, held in place uh, as an army should be in the modern world. Uh, uh, and secondly, the nature uh, of some of those holdings uh, is truly exploitative um, of uh, the areas that they operate in. The money that the military makes through its economic controls enables it to operate outside of parliamentary scrutiny. Uh, it's essential in any democracy that military forces be subject to control by civilian governments and be funded through normal parliamentary appropriations. When the military has its own economic base and is not dependent upon the civilian government and the parliament to provide the money, then it's not a national defence force, it's a private militia. And this essentially is what the Myanmar military has become, a private militia funding itself outside parliamentary scrutiny and control. It's necessary to cut off those accesses, those sources of private funding, so that proper parliamentary and civilian government oversight of the military can be imposed. And that's key to the transition of Myanmar into a proper, inclusive, modern democratic state.
We've started the process of mapping the military's economic interests. And we've done that so that states, uh, financial institutions and the private sector can act on our recommendation from last year to disengage economically from the military. Uh, essentially, we have to cut them off from their sources of funding. And so that's what we're recommending. And we're, we're helping people to do that by identifying those sectors in the economy and those corporate vehicles that the military uses to make its money. Um, we would like to see international financial institutions like the International Finance Corporation not providing any money to projects that these corporations run. We would like to see the private sector not entering into joint ventures. We would like to see governments not providing any uh, financial support, investment, uh, development assistance through these military vehicles. So the linkages between Taj Mahal and the human rights uh, violations and our belief uh, that in preventing that, in having sanctions against that, we can actually help uh, uh, the situation by getting the Taj Mahal to reform uh, dramatically. We are now appealing also uh, to the general public that uh, we share the responsibility in doing something that uh, will fundamentally change the situation whereby accountability then can be pursued uh, with effective uh, actions uh, on the basis of a, a complete exposure of uh, the range, the scale and the, the depth of uh, the Taj Mahal business empire. We've identified in our report uh, a number of states and state-owned enterprises that continue to provide military support to the, the military in Myanmar, Tatmadaw. Um, we know that there are a number of countries that have imposed arms and arms-related embargoes, but there are still countries that are trading. Uh, again, these ties need to be cut. Uh, the military now has a 70-year track record of grave human rights violations including responsibility for some of the most serious crimes under international law. It was evident that uh, the Taj Mahal was truly the main reason for the grave violations uh, that were committed uh, in Myanmar during that period, uh, especially in August of 2017. And then when we looked closer, we noticed that it was their strategy uh, and uh, uh, factors intrinsic to their operations, uh, the accountability of their leaders, it was very clear that that was the focus. Anyone who continues to provide arms to such a military force is supporting these kinds of historic and present day activities. And so the arms have to be cut off so that the human rights are not, uh, violations are not committed.